when a man promises to buy you a garment. The words of elders are indeed words of wisdom. Is it not amazing how proven that a centuries old can effectively explain and instruct on matters of today? The Yoruba say, when a man promises to buy you a garment, look first at the one he is wearing. As simple as it appears, it explains significantly why our choices of leadership have continued to fill us. And it could also offer a basic guide into how we choose leaders in the future. When a man has been governor, and after eight years, the state he governed has 80% poverty rate. He wants to be president, and he says, I will eradicate poverty, and I will lift out of poverty. How? Tell us. In the little Nigeria he has been given to govern, he could not make a dent on poverty. And it thinks that the solution to a failed student should be promotion. When a man had exercised power over a domain for years, and that domain was poorly educated before him, and after all his power and influence, the domain remains an enclave of illiterate. And he says, give me your mandate, and we shall transform education. It is a lie. It won't happen. If every day my kids and kin are being kidnapped, or kill where I come from. And I come to you and say, I will provide you security. Tell him to go and start from his base. If the hospital in his own year doesn't work, or he says it will make your own work, think about it. It is a mockery and a pipe dream. If a man ran a state or exercised great powers on it for say eight years, and by the time he left, the state was still as much a beggar for money from Abuja as he met it. When he came, IGR was only 15% of the state revenue. When he left, IGR was still 15% of the state revenue. And he comes and promises us diversification of the economy. It's just a story. It won't happen. We can go on and on. But like they say, the world is enough for the wise. There is 2023 20, ahead. I hope this proverb will guide our choices. A governor who cannot unite the state cannot unite a much more complex nation. I want to advocate that we judge every governor and other key political office holders who may desire to lead this nation in 2023 by the state of the state they govern and the public offices they led. If he cannot run a state into prosperity, it will run the nation into poverty. Thank you, Bolaho, for that. Because um, I have to say, I think that was really my reaction when I heard that um, Atiku's daughter said that he would run again in 2023. And... I looked at it and I just thought, you know what? <laughs> I've been bitten enough with these old guys. We we don't see any difference. We don't see anything going on. And I, I fell for it last time, but there is no way. I fell for that, you know, I didn't look at the garments. I just said, let me just buy. But I'm not falling for that again. I think I actually said <laughs> to my mom that even if a goat <laughs> puts its name up, I would rather vote for that. I'd rather vote for the unknown mm. than to vote for what I already know. Yeah. Um, what am I going to put my faith in all these old timers that have come? They've been in power for however long, you know, and then we're supposed to believe that they're going to do something. They're not going to do something. And I really think, finally, Ekene, I have to say that your courage last time, though we're all laughing at you, <laughs> saying you wanted to vote for the Morgalus and the Durotoyes and whatever, um, I actually now think, yes, I might just You're join you. Yeah, I'm willing to take that chance. I mean, because, I mean, look at what we've had, what we have. So yeah. why not? Why are you laughing? But let me let me make a point for you. Tell me why you're <laughs> laughing. Because I, 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 I look at it and I'm still trying to understand the psychology. What is it that made us stop caring about the garment? Because I know when people talk about in the olden days, if you were a red a red calfed chief, you merited it. So, you know, I'm, I'm a real advocate for meritocracy, whether in the home, in your classrooms. Mm -hmm. I feel once that breaks down, once you stop caring about who is qualified, 
everything breaks down. And then it even breaks down the incentive to compete in, in, in an honest way. And it take, once you take away that incentive, everybody is now open to corruption. So what is, what is it that made us stop caring? And I still have to bring it back to money, where you somehow are looking at, you know, it's all like emperor's new clothes. Someone tells you that this is the man, and you all fall behind him. Maybe, again, herd mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, something is fundamentally wrong with us, where we don't care enough about who merits the job. And we're more interested in buying the lie. Because by now, we know it's a lie that mm -hmm. just because he's from your state doesn't mean he's going to do anything exactly. for you. So why do we want to keep swallowing that lie time and time again, my brother? My brother doesn't do anything for me. you know. So why am I not looking for the man who will do something for me, irrespective of where he comes exactly. from? What is wrong What is wrong with our mindsets? I really want to get at the heart of this problem. Maybe yes. David Madu so, tell us. <laughs> I'm going to get into that in a second. But mm -hmm. I just want to quickly engage with something that Uche mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, for the avoidance of doubt, um, when you're trying to avoid what has already failed in the past mm -hmm. in the context of Nigeria, we should, we should try and uh, frame it correctly that this isn't necessarily just about those old people. Okay. There are also young people who have failed. Well, that's true. Yeah. So yes. it's about the person's but record. But she's talking about the known failures. Yes. Yeah. It's about the person's the record, not the person's <laughs> age. And that's yeah. important because yes. what I've noticed. Oh, no, I didn't mean it about, I, I hope nobody this thought I was talking about age. <laughs> this isn't a critique of you. I was talking about you. the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a critique of you, mm. but it's something that's important to mention mm. because of recent, we started noticing a number of people under 50, under 40 in politics mm. or in public service in Nigeria who are, who are trying to trade on their age as a political achievement. Okay. <laughs> that I'm in office and I'm 43, so mm. that's an achievement. Mm -mm. Vote for me because I'm young. No, it's about the record, not mm -hmm. the age. No, absolutely. You yeah. can be worse than the old guys. Yes. The second thing I wanted, I wanted to mention I'm was... still looking for enough of the young people. Let me see them. <laughs> Let me first see them. Then we know what you're saying. Let's have go the on. choice. Yeah, carry on. The second thing I was going to mention was with regards to what Ekene said about how the concept of meritocracy in public service or wherever has broken down. With respect to public service in Nigeria specifically, I think that it has turned into a sort of theater for people. People don't really see political leadership in Nigeria as something that interacts with them, yeah. with their lives okay. on a granular level. So you see, let me use <laughs> Let me use where I come from as an example. So some guy who maybe was a, a local council chairman or whatever, or he was in the House of Reps representing this area. And we know him, but he doesn't, he comes maybe once or twice a year, he doesn't even live there, he's very distant, spends all his time in Abuja or wherever. Mm -hmm. And at the end of his term, somehow there's this expectation that, okay, he's supposed to move up to the next level. So now it becomes a senator. What is that based on? I don't know. Do we, do we feel like he has had any impact on our lives? Not really. But like you're saying, we don't but feel we can even influence that whole process. It's not even just that we don't feel like we can influence it. It's just like there's an expectation. Like It's almost like a civil service thing. Oh, yeah, it's like you were on, you were on level on. eight, now you move to level mm. nine. And, and there's, no, there's no explanation why. If you were a rep and you want to become a senator, why? It's yeah. just expected yeah. Yeah. that but, that's what should happen. But where do we you come know? in? That's still that's my you're, point. You're a you governor, so you want to become a president. Yeah. Mm. Why? Nobody yeah. ever, like, nobody thinks about that mm. why. So, because if you think about yeah. the why, well, you that's when you're going to need to start thinking about the person's We're record. We're going to need to bring Chuka in on this. Sorry, because yeah, we I don't think, have much yeah, time. I, 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 I well, think basically my answer to David is that um, they've separated politics and governing. And so they get promoted in, 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 in politics, but we outside are not the ones promoting them. They're doing it completely regardless of what we feel. Mm. And that's because they are doing it regardless of what we feel, because they are elected regardless of what we voted for. So we need to make, make so, them regard us. Yes, and that's it. Together. We are not part of the scheme. Yeah. Mm. We're not part of the scheme for promotion. That's basically what it is. Mm. Oh. We need to make our numbers count. Yes, polls. we do. We do. Um, well, what, what I, you see, is, is absurd. When you look at the political scene and, and the people, various people that are showing interest in running this nation, if you were a, a governor, for example, for eight years, and your state is filled up with out-of-school out of children and Marjorie everywhere, and then the next thing is you said you want to be president. I don't understand how that, how that, how that should be. And it is all over. It's not just about, you know, states where there are Marjorie. There are also people in the South where if you can point at what they have achieved in the previous public office they held, they never led. They made money, all right. And it's, it's just about the money to throw around and they want to lead us again. 
We must be conscious of these things and ensure that the pedigree of the people seeking to lead us, not pedigree in terms of the degrees, but what they have done yeah. to count that's when where, we're making That's where the choices. media have to step in mm. and hold them to, to account. To account. Yeah. Well, Aho and I seem to be on the same page as concerns the need to judge a proposal by its precedent. However, whereas it speaks of it in a largely Nigerian context, I will be turning my attention to Africa after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.